So what I'm going to tell you here is this chord is the same as this chord. Two different sets of notes, but they are identical and I'll explain that in a second. Hello and welcome back to the Demis Helen channel. In this video, we're going to be creating another trans melody and arpeggio for this month. If you want early access to these sort of videos and any other videos, you can follow me on Patreon. Um, this video, you'll get access to the project and the presets as well as the MIDI as well. So if you want them without having to copy them here on screen on YouTube, then you can follow me there and grab a copy of those. So let's kickstart this off. I'm going to delete this vital clip so we can record a new one. I'm just going to shift the mic out of the way and I'm going to play this on the keyboard. Um, it's already premeditated this one. Usually I do these off the top of my head, but this one's premeditated. So let's play the first part in. I'm going to play four bars and then we'll manipulate those four bars. Okay, just a couple of mistakes in there, but that will do straight into the computer. So I'm going to quantize those to 16 and I'm also going to change the fixed lens to the 16 I'm just going to get rid of that rogue E. You can see we're composing in G minor in this one, and that is our starting position. So let's have a look at that. So we've got a lovely starting point there in G minor. So if you want to follow this, G natural minor. So let's do a little bit of theory. If you want to skip this part, you can, but it is incredibly helpful to understand what's happening with this chord structure and how I've played this. So what I'm going to tell you here is this chord is the same as this chord. Two different sets of notes, but they are identical, and I'll explain that in a second. So the first chord here, we've got a G minor. So we're following the rule of misanote, adenote, misanote, adenote, which is our standard triad. Anything in orange we ignore, so misanote, so we're going to miss that A, and we're going to go for the A sharp. We're going to ignore that one, so we're missing the C, ignore that one, D. That is our standard triad right there, but we're not including the fifth note. So this is the first, third, and fifth note. I don't want that top note in because it changes up the feel of the song. Um, maybe for a later progression, we could change that up. But for now, that's how I want it. And we've got the G mimicked in the bass. We've got the first two notes of a triad in G minor, and we've got the G in the bass. Standard stuff. The second one, however, is a very different approach. So if you look, we've got an A in the bass, but then we've got an F and a C, nowhere near the same as these. So if we transpose this back up, you can see that we've got an F sharp chord, and that's because we have three notes between the first two notes. That is signifying a sharpened chord instead of a minor chord, which would be that, but then that's not in the scale. So what we're going to do with this is you can see that we've got the first, third, and fifth. We've got the major chord. What we'd do is remove that one if we were going to follow the same suit style as that, and we'd have an F in the bass, which would sound like this. Very common progression. Very sort of like Cosmic Gate, the Exploration of Space style stuff. Now, I said that the chord at the end is the same as the second chord, and you can see now we have just created the same chord there. But if we undo this, you can see that that is an F sharp chord. So the next note will be C, exactly like you see here. But with this, I've transposed the A down, so the third down there, whereas this one, I've just left the first two notes. So I've done exactly what I've just shown you, how that chord's made up, but just played in a different way. keeps it nice and open-ended and sort of gives you that nice transition to that sort of like standard major chord after this. So we're kind of going minor. So if you look at this again, we're going minor, two notes, major, three, major, three, major, three. So it's a minor, major, major, major sequence here. Okay, so I'm going to change this up a little bit now. And what we can do first is just create a copy. So I'm just going to put the copy over here. So if we make any mistakes, we can go back. You can undo, but if your program crashes, for example, you won't be able to undo that. So jumping into this, I am going to make an alternate version of this that's going to be the final one. So, so at the moment we go, and then it goes down. It needs to go up another one. 
before that next chord. And that's simply done by transposing that one octave up, or one note up, should we say. But the bass needs to move as well, so I'm going to shift that up to that B flat. It says A sharp, but it's a B flat. And now we're starting to get that classic territory. Beautiful. So we need to extend this, and the best way that we can do that is to drag this out. Let's loop this whole section. And I'm going to make a copy of this. And what we're going to do for the second part, so you can see the first part rises back up. This is the repeat. Now we've got the A and the A sharp, or the B flat, should we say it there. I'm going to put this on C. So we're mimicking the fifth note of that chord. And then let's see what happens with this. Let's get it off to here. Arguably, maybe a bit higher. So now that we've got that, you might be wondering how are we going to progress this section here because we want it to be climactic. We want this to sort of elevate and be a bit more uplifting. We can simply just transpose this up on octave and you're going to get a different sound. It's the same sound, but it gives you that more climactic feeling because we're going upwards still, which is depicted by this F. So instead of it jumping up to a D like there, we're going to jump up to the F. So it kind of tells you that it's going to go higher. as opposed to this. It's a little bit anti, well, I say a little bit, it's totally anticlimactic. So we're gonna put that there, but then this sounds a bit too samey here. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna utilize the C. So now that we've got the construction here, we can make the tweaks to the sound. So these are really easy. You can just mess around with different notation. You can just shift things around like this, just as long as they're within key and you can have a mess around. But I want to be sort of conservative with this, but at the same time, sort of like make the most out of little transitions that are gonna happen. So like this bit here, where we just rise upwards. So you can see that we hold the chord here, then we break it here and then we hold it, but we hold it way longer over that first bar. So we're a bar and a half of holding. So I'm going to take those two notes and let's just say we transpose to here and then I'd make this one. So you kind of make an elevation and then we fall. Now you can do this with any note. Um, it really depends on the flavor you're going for. So that's a totally different feel to just those two. So I don't want to, the reason that I won't go higher on this one, maybe on the second time round, so we've got a 16 bar loop, I want it to be sort of, give it a little bit of elevation, but I don't want to go too far up because this bit's going to do that job over here. Um, again, this is subject to how you want your melody to sound, but you need to keep a little bit of interest rolling. So with that, we can see again, we've got one bar there. We've got that one where it splits across and you can see we hold the bass instead of moving the bass up on that one. And then we hold this one far too long again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these notes and I'm gonna make a rise. So I'm gonna do a similar jump to like this F does here. Let's just try C. And then this can just continue rising. So maybe just I think that's going to sound a little bit weird. Maybe that half step's not going to work there. So I'd say the next note in the scale, which is F. There we are. That sounds okay. You can obviously, it's open to subject and change for each person that's designing their own music. That's what gives you your own style. But you can see we've got that lovely classic vibe to this now. So let's have a listen to this just with the filter opening and closing on our current setup. Okay, so it might not be to everyone's taste, but you're getting a nice solid core design there for you to change up at will. So we're gonna add a little bit more embellishment to this. We're gonna take each bass note Let's hold that one, that would work. 
take each base note here and what we're going to do drag this down one octave and just offset it one sixteenth okay and the first two notes here i feel could be further over maybe these two here but let's have a listen i like both but i feel just adding a little bit of a change at the beginning of each one so each bar So you just get a little bit of difference in each movement of them. And if you wanted to double down on those bass notes, so let's just grab all of these and we could throw them down another octave here. We get a very interesting texture. So it's up to you, you could change those notes up. So if we was to zoom in on this section, you can see if we just fill the gaps in, so we've got no gaps whatsoever in the bass note. Works quite nice. So let me do that for all of them here. So you might have realized I'm drawing these an octave higher. Um, just so you can see, I can copy them across then in their respective positions, but then I can just transpose them down to where they need to be, like so. So there we are, that brings us to the end of the video. If you want to see more videos like this and you did enjoy it, then you know exactly what to do to see more of those. And with that said, I've been Demis Helen and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care.